Well guys, here it is. My IBM 224 dictation unit. I managed to get it off of eBay and have sort of uh, resurrected this nearly 50 year old recording device. This is the year 2013 in the month of November and I have taken the time to attempt to get this unit working and it required some modification to the unit and I will show you what I had to modify. It also required me to completely take the motor assembly apart and put it back together because it was making a horrible squeaking noise. And you'll see that as I demonstrate the unit in operation. Unlike most of my videos that I do in one take, I wasn't able to make this video in one take. So let's begin by going through the other takes that we had to do to get this unit working. I will say that there are some great commercials for this unit here on YouTube, and I encourage you to check those out because they are very cool. Uh, from what I've read online, this unit was made in 1965 and was marketed to businessmen as a means of recording their thoughts and dictating letters for a secretary to type for them. So, let's take a look on the inside. Of course, to separate the unit from its metal shell, you're going to need to hold down this button. It takes two hands, so once you push this button in, you're going to pull the other end out like I said, it's a little tough to do while you're holding the camera. But then this whole unit is going to pull out. Now to get it out of the metal shell, there's a little tiny catch that's on the bottom. And I don't know if you can see it from in here, but it's up underneath here. And you may have to pry this little metal piece down. And I'll show you what that metal piece looks like that you're actually going to pry up. What I did is I stuck a long flathead screwdriver up in between the lid and this little uh, uh, catch right here and I just pushed it down because the thing that you're pushing it down to let it release from is up underneath the cover here it is that right there so once you lift that uh, spring if you will up above that then the unit will separate from the metal housing once you have the unit out of its metal shell, there are several screws that you're going to need to remove in order to take these units uh, apart from each other. So it's basically two separate pieces. And the screws are these two screws right there that you see on that side. There is that screw right there that you see with the little white uh, washer on it. And then there's two more screws on this end. There's one right there, and there's one right there. And then once you have those two uh, sections here, plus the one in the middle, then this part here can come across, uh, apart from the main unit uh, over here. Okay, so just a little uh, help there getting it apart. Once inside the unit, you're probably going to find the following you're going to find that this little tiny gear here has busted off. And you may find that this one here, like mine, is cracked. And the belt, the original drive belt, will be crumbled up into pieces, like mine was when I received it. Um, or you will find uh, that the belt has turned into a gummy, gooey mess. This particular belt that I'm holding on to here, or this piece of belt, is not the original belt that was inside the unit. This is just an example of the type of unit, or the type of belt that it had. This particular wheel goes here, and this little white guy here was right here. So what I had to do was find something that I could substitute. So what I did, is I, as you can see here, I put a pulley right there, and I put a uh, flywheel on this side. This little flywheel here came out of this cheap little cassette player. 
All right, so I took it apart and I took the, cap, the, the flywheel off of it that drove the capstan. It was right here. Then I had to get a drill and drill the center out so that it was the same size as to fit onto this spindle right here. This here, I had to drill a hole through the center of this drum and as far in as I could go. And I drilled a really small hole and then uh, I put a screw in there to hold that particular piece on there. This piece here also, I believe, came out of a tape recorder of some kind, but it was in my stash of, uh, of parts that I had collected over the years. As far as power goes, you can use this jack right here, and the unit requires 10 volts of power. I do not have anything that uh, offers 10 volts, but I did find an adapter, which I have wired up here, and this particular uh, power supply that you're looking at now probably went with some kind of a Panasonic, older Panasonic phone. And let's see, it has, it offers 9 volts and 500 milliamps. So that's pretty close to 10 volts. So again, I have that wired up here. And then this particular jack is not a regular three and a half millimeter jack. It's a smaller one. I guess it's a two and a half millimeter. I'm not sure. But uh, this particular uh, plug that you're looking at here is part of the uh, headset that would connect to a cordless telephone in a house. So I'm using that as my power. All right, then as far as the controls go, uh, to play back uh, a, a recording, you flip this to this position, and you'll see that this particular meter here uh, goes into the white area to tell you that, you're, that you've got enough battery. So we're, we're good on the battery. So what you can see down here, since we've powered it up, is now we have the correct action that we need here for the uh, drive motor which is encased in here somewhere and that is now driving the uh, the playback and record head across the dial there so it's moving very slowly across there don't know if you can see that yep so those were some things I had to overcome in order to get this unit working it uses a very strange battery and uh, I have not seen one because this unit didn't uh, come to me with that particular battery in it. Placing the uh, gears or rotors or whatever you want to call these things on the side was only half the battle. Uh, once I got those on there, I noticed that the motor in this thing was really, really squeaky. And the motor is actually built in to this roller thing here and there's two things on the top that you have to unscrew to get to the motor inside and I'm going to be lucky if I get it back together the way it, it was put together. For one thing there was a white wire that came off. You can see the white wire right here and the white wire attaches to this lead right here on the end of this unit. But look at this thing. This thing is, looks like something out of a science fiction movie or something. I mean it's got this uh, gear thing turning here on this end and what I did was is I I sprayed some of this uh, super tech lubricant here into the end of it to get the squeaking to stop and I mean it was like attack of the mice it sounded so squeaky so after I did that I, uh, I, I sprayed the lubricant into that end and I also used some of this 3-in-1 oil in that side and then I also sprayed some into this housing here on the other end of it and right now I'm exercising it here on this little 9 volt battery so um, it did have a little bit of trouble pulling the tape across the uh, mechanism there over the top <clears throat> so and the squeaking was driving me crazy so I had to just go crazy and uh, yeah I guess it just drove me to the point of craziness that I had to take it apart and fix it um, I also had a little trouble getting this particular thing off because there are screws on the underside of this unit right here 
you can see them here uh, actually you can see the holes for them but there's screws that hold this end cap here on the end cap goes on right there and that part has to come off in order for you to get to the wires and um, all the other stuff going into the motor and the wires of course are coming from right there in which I, uh, I cut them uh, not so short that I wouldn't know which wire goes where uh, the three colors there the red the white and the black go to the motor and then there's a gray wire that attaches uh, here underneath the lid and that that's part of your uh, battery contact that works uh, it corresponds to the cap that uh, goes on the end oh here it is corresponds to this cap that goes on the end and holds the, the battery in place so anyway uh, this is the little uh, space age motor that uh, runs this thing and uh, I had to show you that part uh, as you can see on there it says made in Germany and it's got it looks like a date code 11 65 10 219 and as you can hear now it uh, it runs pretty nice and quiet here again is the motor with the uh, one of the caps put back on and I've resoldered the white wire back to that lead that I showed you and then there's this gold sleeve that goes on here and I've attached the gold sleeve back to the outside here's our drive roller mechanism uh, put back together here with the wires hanging back out and there were two pieces here on this end that had to be screwed back on so they unscrew counterclockwise this cap unscrews first and there's an insert that's on the inside that unscrews counterclockwise and then there was a little tiny set screw that I had to take out over on this side you'll see the hole that I had to drill to make uh, room for the um, the little pulley that we put on the other side oh and here's my little pulley just to show you close up with the little screw through it that I uh, that I put on the other side as well now here is the final working, sort of working, product. You are listening to the IBM 224 Dictation Unit. This unit has the ability to play back and record the human voice or any other noises that you would like to record. This can be done simply and easily wherever you are, wherever you think, or wherever you don't think. You are listening to the IBM 224 Dictation Unit. This unit has the ability to play back and record the human voice or any other noises that you would like to record. This can be done simply and easily wherever you are, wherever you think.